episode 93 on the air marker <laughs> Are you, are you now taking, oh, by the way, fantastic job. It's nice to see you. Are you now taking the- uh, Center stage. Now the James Eastman? I'm just, I'm so nervous and- awkward. You're right front it's and center. Awkward. It's very awkward. This feels good. We can't see Trace anymore because it's just the James show. Fantastic, nice job. The James game. All right. Hey, this is episode 93. Episode 93. Ooh. You know what you have to learn for 99? 99. 99. There it By is. By Toto, right? Is. Mm. That's a tough song. But if we could pull that off, right, for the episode 99? Oh, absolutely. Could you guys do that? Yeah. All right. I think so. All right. Could you do it today? And then 99 Dos Balloons, too. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Good. From Nana, 1982. <laughs> Bam. You can't teach that. Maybe 1983. I don't think so. Because <laughs> my first thought was 83. Yeah. I think it was 82. Either way. Uh, how are you doing? Great. I'm, I'm doing great. What a great week. Um, hey, one week from today, you guys are at the Hess Fest. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we are next, yeah, that's right, yeah. seven days from now, huh? Yeah, over in IB, I can't remember the location. Um, at the pier. Is it at the pier? Now? at the pier. Because we've been in a couple different locations for Hesfest. We played this thing, this is my, maybe our seventh time that we played Hesfest. So uh, this will be fantastic. And we had a big crowd last year, this year. And Mike Hess, what a great guy um, for, for coming on air. You'll see some, you'll see some advertisement for the show this week. That yeah. I, think I, I love the, um, the announcer you guys have. That mean, really mean Tommy Sablon? <laughs> you know, Tommy voices. Do you guys know that Tommy voices our commercials? Since you don't see the commercials on TV, since you're in the show. Yeah, Tommy um, Tommy does the voiceover for the Sully Bit. Yeah, next, come see us. And there's plenty of beer, plenty of food, super fun. Yes. And we all kind of hang out afterwards, actually. This is not one of those shows that we leave right away. So that's hey. good. Can I just, before you go there, yeah. can I talk about the San Diego Padres? Yes. Come uh -oh. on. Uh -oh. We have a billion and a half dollars on between third base, shortstop, and right field right now. You know, and probably close to a billion dollars uh, with, uh, you know, bringing Bell on and a couple other players. With like 40 That's games left, do you think we can still catch the Dodgers? Or catch the Dodgers. Just... We're World Series contenders suddenly. <laughs> we're not just freaking... Well, we're still behind the Dodgers, Doesn't but all matter. we got to do, all we have to do is stay ahead of the Giants. Yeah. Used to, the freeway series used to be the Angels in the Dodgers <laughs> until the Padres came down. So I'm a really, you know, big welcome uh, to our new players on the Padres. Anybody, any Padre players want to come on the show? It's anytime. Well, yeah, they're probably watching right now. I'm sure they are. <laughs> Actually, I think they're playing right now. All right, well, so what do we yeah, I wanted to say thank you to the KUSI viewers. KUSI viewers <laughs> are really cool. The San Diego Best UT Readers Poll 2022 came out. KUSI News wins for Best Local Evening News, KUSI. Best Local Morning News, KUSI. Best Local Weekend News, KUSI. Best Local News Anchor, Jenny Milkowski. Best Local News Sportscaster, Brandon Stone. Best Television Personality, Jenny Milkowski. Can I ask you, did you even try to get us in that thing? I voted so many times. No, did you it. try to get our names on there? Don't you have to submit and then you go get votes? You know what, I did not. But we are, hopefully we'll be in it for 2023. 2023. 2023 is our year. And one of our guests. It's a long road to the middle, Tommy. One of our guests, <laughs> one of our guests, her radio station won best radio station. We'll find out. Who well, that speaking is. of guests, let's get to them. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, from Apple's politics and rock and roll, my favorite San Diego mayor. Roger Hedgecock. Wow. Good to see you. Man of the year. Wow. Oh, yeah, man Thank of the year. Thank you for your kind email. Look, look, keep me on Lymphona. Those guys need every dime they can get. And you just went out. I don't know how you do it. You have 100 jobs, and you're out there raising money. Do you know what we did? People? I had a great team. 
Yeah. Um, led by Mary Bird Godwin, our, our, our den mother here, who you yep. see on TV every day. Yep. And also uh, Dina Cruden, who used to ran, run uh, the San Diego Foundation. I think that's what it was called. She helped me out, get people in. And we have, you know, many of you know that I have a bifurcated life as, a, as an investment banker, as well as a studio owner, as well as a Bifurcated only means two. You have like I'm four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the point, but the point is, um, I I've got a couple of biotech, biopharma clients that really stepped up and helped out, and I think part of it though was I had to check myself, Roger, because and I told Tommy this. Well, I, the first when Tommy talked me into this along with Lauren Finney, I said, okay, what's the record? Yeah, that was the first thing, because I'm competitive. Uh, no. And then I said, <laughs> surprise, the, the guy that was across the dial from me for 20 years or whatever. <laughs> um, the and the other thing was, I said, well, let's not just beat the record. Let's crush it. Crush let's it. Let's help them. And you did. Let's raise the bar. And, you did. And the guy who came in second crushed, crushed it, it, too. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, you were so far ahead of him, it didn't matter. Yeah, it's so funny. When we hit 300,000, we, we moved the bar to 400,000. Wow. And what they don't tell you during this thing is you can't tell anybody where you're at or even what your goal is. Sure. Unless it's a private event. So this guy, and I felt so bad for him. Because, you know, the last record was 205-something. He was way, way above He's that. thinking... Hey, Great. let's go to Vegas after this. Let's go. And then we roll in there with our unfair advantage. You know Thank what, you though? so much. I no, it was great. And, and uh, for all of that, what happened? What? Leukemia and Lymphoma Society got some money. Exactly right. Great. Yeah, we had a record year, not yeah. just for us, race, but the entire, the yep. entire field. S speaking of records, yes. I want to ask you a question. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the records question. Because I've been into a lot of rock and roll documentaries, watching Netflix a lot, watching everything. Right. And there was a documentary on Clive Davis, and I watched a documentary on David Geffen. And they were that talking about music in the late 60s up in Los Angeles. You know, Clive Davis representing Janis Joplin. Yep. That's why your intro was a Janis Joplin yep. tune. Heard it. Did you ever get to run into Clive and, and David Geffen as you were doing rock and roll concerts here? Didn't like the guys, and I'll tell you why. Because they were taking people that I was working the bands in San Francisco and stuff, and then they would sign them to these big multi-million dollar contracts, and then they didn't want to do little right. gigs, and they didn't want to do, you know, reasonable yeah. prices, and I was unhappy. Right. Because they were really making stars out of these people. Yeah. Where we knew them as in the neighborhood. I mean, I lived in the neighborhood with, yeah. the, with the Laurel Canyon. Right. Yeah. So, this up in San Francisco when I was going to law school, I lived there. So this is, um, uh, I, I watched those things too, and they were really, really good entrepreneurs, and they really knew what they were doing, and they were very successful, although very unhappy people. Wow. Did you notice that personally? They were yeah. Very yeah. Every one of them was a wreck. I, they I've, were seen, wreck. I've seen a couple of them. And and I and, I, and you know God bless. I'm not a wreck. And everybody I knew during those era that didn't try to make it, you know, as pop, big as possible, are, are great. And they're doing really well. And I, I really feel good about. You know, speaking of those, I watched. Um, I watched when I was out of town on the plane the Brian Wilson story. Yeah. yeah. Which we've all heard of a million times. But this is really in depth, and it gives you a heart for a guy who's been struggling. Since he was 20 years old, mm -hmm. the year before they hit fame, he's been struggling that long right. with basically voices in his head. And it's called, right. it, it's not schizophrenia. Uh, it's, it, it, the, word, the first part of the word is schizo, but it's not schizophrenia. But it's basically hearing uh, voices in his head that want to kill him his entire life. And he tends to be maybe the, the most talented songwriter if you consider everything he's done. And some of the people that went on there to talk Paul about Paul McCartney him. loves it. Yeah, Paul McCartney is, is one of his biggest fans. God Only Knows. Yeah. They say that's one of the best songs ever, ever written. written. That's exactly right. Or, or the Although Chuck Berry sued him, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> he, he stole one and, of his songs. And, yeah. and speaking of Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys, Mike yeah. Love and Bruce Johnson, they're in town tonight playing the Rady Shell. Are they calling, are they calling it the Beach Boys? Um, the Beach Boys with Mike Love. Oh, I see. And in the little, there's little disclaimers. You know, Al Jardine is not on this tour. And no, but I've seen him two of the that, three Wilson brothers. Group, are tasked. And they are identical to the Beach Boys. Oh yeah, They're really, really good. Mike Love's son's playing. As a matter of fact, I think we have Mike Love's cell phone. Maybe before the end of the show, maybe we can get him on the phone. Really? Yeah. He's been on the show before. Oh, yeah. I love. Great you know, guy. You yeah. know what's what's interesting is on that documentary. There was one segment where Brian Wilson's being being interviewed by by a reporter, and she's going through all the songs, and she talk, says a couple of Jan and Dean songs. He's like, Jan and Dean, no, that's a, Jan and Dean. Like they so totally pulled him out. But apparently it was a thing that he knew they were out there. He knew they were copping oh, their stuff, and it was crazy stuff. So, well, speaking of radio, yes, let's bring out the next guest. She is one of the most successful radio personalities at iHeartRadio. Heard on many stations across the country. We love her on Star 94.1, Delena Bennett. Hi, Bennett. Good to see you. How are you? Delena. Nice to Hi, see you. Tommy. Love you. Hi, Delena. How are you? 
Love you. Mwah. How long right. have you been with uh, with 94.1? No? Over here, Delaney. About, uh, gosh, now, probably about 13 years or so. 13 yeah. years? Yeah, yeah. You know that Delana did a stint with me and Rusty Nails on the Big Biz Show. Oh, so. I did. And I don't know fun. why we did it. We had a blast doing it. Was it, I, was it just to see what I, it would be like? I, well, I like business. You know, I like oh, real right. estate. I, I, I watch seven. stocks and stuff like that. Yeah, actually, Sully, you've given me some great advice, so I'm rich now. Oh, thank you. Well, you no, were... I'm kidding. <laughs> Not quite this yet. This woman here Not quite is a great yet. business person because I have, I, I have, <laughs> I could go through our text thread for the last 15 or 20 years or how long it's been and talk about real estate. Yeah. You started buying real estate at a very young age. I did. And I you did. go. I did. Only way to go. No kidding. So, and, then, and then she got into equities. Uh, yeah, but I, but I sold the real estate because it was a pain in the, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're an equities person? <laughs> hey, you know I remember what? telling I remember telling her one time when Apple dove or something I can't remember the stock and I mm -hmm. said remember this just because something's cheap doesn't mean it's not going to get cheaper the trend is your friend <laughs> right buy on the way up sell on the way down oh. or just buy and hold and don't think about it because if Apple was a good stock when you bought it at 143 is it a good stock now yeah it's, it's a good stock a you, you told me okay, uh, when you get older yeah it's you get a little more concerned it's, it's sell, <laughs> sell and spend right. yeah that's right you do sell buy and, and hold to sell and spend when you're you know above 65. i there just go. got out my ca calculator i know delana was on with us in 2007 i think it's more like 15 16 years oh is it already yeah. wow wait wow. yeah i guess so huh yeah. is that 15 years see i'm not very good at math that's why i get in touch with sully for stock picks <laughs> so on <laughs> so on the music radio side which which yeah. roger and i will candidly tell you is much different than the talk radio side because i tried doing you know i did the planet 1037 for literally three months i remember didn't work because no. you can only talk for 30 seconds at a time Terrible. I can't even get warmed up. Exactly. Delana's heard all over the country. I, I am. I'm, I, I, I think I'm in about 50 markets 50. now. Yeah. Uh, but I was telling Roger before we came in, the thing about talk radio is that is a, a very special skill. And uh, I thought I'd try it one time, but I, it literally made me sick to my stomach to think about <laughs> doing a three-hour show talking the whole time because that's just not my skill. My skill is... Uh, engaging. Bril Your skill is engaging. Brilliance with an economy of words. You want to hear a great music show? I can give you a great music show, but I mean, on Jeff and Jer, you know, that opened up my world oh, for yeah. talk too. Over 15 years. Well, it was ago. interesting yeah. though, is that in a matter of moments over the course of an hour, okay, versus, you know, what do we have? What did our block? 14, 11, 14, 8, or something no, like that? We were 40, 42 minutes. 42 minutes. Yeah. And in just a few moments over the course of an hour, people get your personality and they can fall in love with you. And they have. It's really interesting to You're me. You're comfortable. How you do that. Oh, yeah, well, it's just me. Um, and that's the hardest skill to learn, I think, in radio for a lot of people is... You didn't learn it. You had it. You didn't learn it. You just, had it. You just have, have to be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your voice is soothing. Yeah. Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> I'll call you late at night. <laughs> and here's the you words. Tommy's a pretty good endorser. Yes, he is. You're the best endorser. I know Jesse's pretty good. Dave Rickards is fantastic. But you are a great endorser. Thank you for saying that. That voice. That means a lot. And I know, and I hear that voice on television as well as radio. And I, I, I appreciate my clients, you know, and, and I do the best job I can. And it's all, it is absolutely all true and how I feel. So that's a great thing. And, you know, I'll brag on myself. I just won a national award for best endorser for iHeartMedia. Boom. And there it is. Just like that. There it is. Oh, and thanks for the shout out for best radio station, too. Yeah. yeah. Star 94.1. Wow. Star 94.1. Yeah. The, um, that's it's turning into a little dream team like you guys used to have over at B100, you know? You got Jesse in the morning, you got yeah. uh, Delaney in the afternoon, you know? Oh yeah, Star 94.1 doing it. They got a guy from LA that does middays, I think. What's his name? Uh, on Star? Yeah. Um, that's Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That guy? Oh, oh that, that, guy. Guy? that guy. And then there's Mario Lopez at <laughs> night. Yeah. But I, I, How does he do I, that? Does, say, is that a tape deal or something? Yeah, or? yeah it's all recorded. Yeah, it he's, on the air, he's on the air in L.A. Well, what they do is a morning show in L.A., and uh -huh. then they edit it for other day parts across the country. So what you hear has been done in the morning and then edited for midday and afternoons. Wow. Um, but Mario class. Lopez is on with us at night. Um, let me give a shout-out to Joe Hayes. He's incredible, yeah, he's great, great leader. I've been trying um, to get hit, man. Tati, Shelly. I mean, it takes a team to put together a great Radio station. Joe Hayes needs to come on this show. Yes, he does. Yeah. Why won't he? <laughs> and I, you know, I was, you know. one thing about Joe guy. Hayes, I love his voice. Yeah. Joe, if you talk to Hayes, like I can't, I, it, I can't freaking mimic Hayes. But I, it, from the first time I heard him, something about him, and it's like I think he is he from Philly or something. I can't remember. No, where he's, he's from. actually from Jacksonville, Florida. Is he really? Yeah. So funny. Yeah, but uh, he's, got, he's got that accent. All right, all right. Let's go. Let's Speaking keep going. Of radio. In radio, there isn't anyone who cares more about the military than this man. Ladies and gentlemen, from 101.5 KGB and Motorcycle Monkey, Clint August.
Clint. You know, you know why we play that music, right? Yeah. Because of his May ride. Yeah, of course. And because of his motorcycle uh, ride. And the fact that you're around all the bikers all the time. To be wild. I like to pretend that I'm wild. So we have some motorcycle stuff. <laughs> There's some of your stuff on the set somewhere here. Yeah, you got a mug somewhere over yeah, there. Yeah, it is. It could be it's probably buried. covered by your it platinum could... selling album right no. there. Hey, Clint, when I told you you were going to be on the show or when I asked you, yeah. I said, hey, Roger Hedgecott, Delano will be here too. And you said, hey, Roger, isn't there something you guys did together? Oh, well, not together, but we did work right down the hall. And, and I've loved Roger for years, Delana as well. But the story with this is that Cliff Albert, back in the day when he was the PD, still in radio, a legend like you are in the business. And he, he says, hey, he says, you want to be a guest host for Roger Hedgecock? Now I'm coming from the FM side of the dial, where you talk for maybe 30 seconds to a minute and a half, to filling 15 minutes three or four times an hour. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, I'm in. I'll do it. I wasn't smart enough to know I shouldn't. So I step in there, and I had over-prepped. I must have had enough prep for you. It would have been three days. For me, literally in the first 15 minutes, I went through all of it. <laughs> and, and Cliff could hear this. So Cliff, he's on vacation. I'm proud to be doing this. Cliff calls me up off the air and goes, hey, Clint, uh, doing a great job. You sound good, but um, how much prep do you have left? I said, none. And he goes, slow down. Yeah. Now go back to your first subject <laughs> yeah. and dig into dig it. Dig into it. He says, if you get calls, that's the cream on the cake, but don't count on them. Right. You know, listeners. And so I did, and it really helped the rest of the show. As far as I'm concerned, I did spectacularly, but never like you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you do three hours? Uh, I think it was four. Wasn't no, it four? I was doing four at one point. Yeah. Did yeah. you do the, is it the longest four hours of your life on radio? It was, it turned out to be some of the most fun, but yes. After that phone call. And all the prep I'd, I prepped for days to do that. <laughs> See, but you know, and, and he'll tell you in talk radio, some of the stuff is when they don't call and you know you're driving them crazy. Yeah. You know, like you know you're driving them crazy. Oh, I, and, and then I accelerate the crazy. That's exactly. Always, that's what you got to do. And then you <laughs> open up the phone lines and let, well, either pounding the steering wheel or you play, leave, them in the park, leave them in the parking lot for 10 minutes while you say, you know what? And I'll tell you what, in just a couple of seconds, you won't believe what Kevin Faulkner was caught doing. Yes, that's right. Oh. News Radio 600, come. <laughs> oh. Who, by the way, is listening, watching right now? Okay, okay. Kevin, by the way, Kevin did nothing. He He's did a good nothing. friend. Right. Kevin, Kevin Rucker never does anything. So no. that, Kevin's one of my best friends. would have worked. Well, it, it was an example. But the point is, the best compliment you can get in talk radio right. is, I hate it when I'm sitting in the parking lot waiting for you to come back on. Because if you're going to tease, you got to pay the tease. But sometimes they're just waiting for you. Yep. you got to get that quarter hour. Yep. I did get that one phone call off the air. Hey, hey the producer put uh, Kevin. Kevin put her through. She goes, listen. I got to get in the grocery store, and I want to go in now, and it's like well, however many minutes of commercials, wow. what is the subject you're going to I said, that's I can't tell you. That's the best compliment you could get in that's talk the, radio. That's the best. Is, that's the best. Is, is keeping them engaged. Good Cliff stuff. taught me that, actually. Filling in go. for you. There you go. Yep. I love that Cliff, Al Cliff Albert was who plucked me out of oblivion. That is Cliff, though. Hey, man. Um, yeah. That's how he starts everything when you're about you're to do, get a you're big doing load great. You're doing of great. something dumped on you, good or bad. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, and he keeps his card super close to the vest. So you have no idea what it, which way he's coming at you. <laughs> hey, on your first day of radio, you know, you get hired, yep. and, you, and you're, you're in there, you walk in. I believe you had a flu that day. Yep. And uh, you get in front of that microphone, and the engineer turns on the radio or turns on that button. How did you feel, or did you were you were you nervous, or did you just I know? I looked outside I can the talk? big window. There's a big window to the out other part of the studio, and and there was um, People magazine, CBS National News. They were all there to see another mayor like Cock, yeah. Koch in New York, or Sam Yorty in L.A. Yeah. Fail at talk radio, right? So that kind of irritated me a lot. <clears throat> you know, know I am. <laughs> I, got, sure. I, got, I got a little irritated, and so I started in kind of with an edge. Yeah. But I had this flu, so I had to tell my mother. This is the first thing I said, actually. I said, Mom, A, I have a job, which was, which was new. You thought it was over, Mom. <laughs> it's, it's a job. And two, uh, it is me, even though it doesn't sound like me. And uh, she laughed about it later, thankfully. But uh, it, was, um, it was an interesting day, because I was in a panic and irritated and on edge and sick at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Which, is a, which is a great way to start the show. All right, look at this. Roger Hedgecock. Clint August, Delana Bennett. Yeah. This is royalty here. Dream team. Tommy Sully, Sully Bennett. We got another guest coming up. Yes. On the air, on the air. Yeah. What's your name? Is it Mary or Sue? What's your name? Do, Do I stand a chance with you? It's so hard to find a personality with charms like yours for me. Ooh -wee, ooh -wee, ooh -wee. What's your name? What's your name? 
You know what's the best about that? Is that this is what I was saying. Russ, well, he was my work wife for 25 years. He was a horrible singer. He was, and I was too. Are you kidding? I don't even get to sing at family oh, gatherings. This guy got played. <laughs> this guy played at Monarch 2 p.m. Sunday. Monarch. I mean, and he got paid for it. And the day that he passed on that stage, oh man, he was singing. I always say I can't decide whether I'm more shocked or set back from his death and his passing on stage or, or his performance. It, it, <laughs> was, it was the best. You, James, it was, it was the, best. the best performance he ever did. Yeah. He did Love My Way from Melt With You. Or Melt, Melt With You. He did Melt With yeah. Modern English. Yeah. And Modern I remember English. I was supposed to sing next, and as he was performing and doing so well, I told Sully, I whispered in his ear. Which yeah, he often yeah, does. And I went, oh, man. Because <laughs> I didn't want to go next because he did so well. Yeah, was, that's that's yeah. we should show more stuff with Russ like that, but but he was you know the two of you together. Oh, that would have been you. a great talk show. That was oh, that oh would have been God. a great talk show. The two, the two of us because I knew him from the stand-up days back I in remember. the eighties, you know. Yeah. And he and the two of us together whenever we got together, we just yeah. crazy stuff as you just right. saw. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Um, I have a question for Delaney. All right. So Delaney, you're on over fifty stations mm -hmm. across the country. Yeah. iHeartRadio. Yeah. Yeah. You're on here in San Diego on Star 94.1. And I remember you posted about being on with one of your heroes up north, San Francisco. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's uh, that? So Martha Quinn. She, oh, uh, Mar oh. you know, the original Martha Quinn. MTV VJ. MVJ? MTV yeah, yeah, right. right? Um, Martha Quinn, I mean, when she reaches out to you, I joined her station up in San Francisco. Um, wow. And, she, you know, when she reaches out to you and sends you congratulations, welcome to the team, you're like, yes. okay. All right, Martha yeah, said hi. Right? So yeah, that, that definitely made my day. She's a she's a great person. So how do you do it? You're on so many stations, right? And I've seen Clint voice track like two or three stations, and that's like amazing. Well, explain what voice track is for our, for our audience that may not know what that uh, is. You you record a show mm -hmm. that's on in other markets, which is great though because with Roger right. and I to voice track it takes us. 43 minutes <laughs> for you guys to vote. How long does it take you an hour? Because if we did a voice track, we would be there for yeah, long time. three of the long four time. hours anyway. <laughs> if you have to voice track a show, how long does it take for per hour? Well, what about you, Clint? Because you, you you do it too. I take more time just because I want them to think I'm worth the money. I probably take about 45 <laughs> minutes per show, which you? you could do 20 minutes probably. Yeah, yeah I usually do about 20, um, de depending on which market it is. Uh, because if it's my favorite market, I have favorites, Salt Lake City and Seattle, stuff like that. I, I How do you them keep track? More time. Like, I how don't do you, know. Like, I, how I, do you that, know? Like, is, is there a... I don't know. Like, do you I have a, know. like, you know, like rock stars on stage, I, you know, Mick Jagger says, you know, Salt Lake City. Like, do you have... No, something? it's not, a, by the way, that's not a sound monitor in front of them. It's a television <laughs> with the, with the lyric. Yeah, I know because I have one. Yeah. Those are lyrics and reminders of what you're supposed to yeah. say. How do you do it? I just memorize it. Oh my gosh. I honestly, uh, I do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the words to Brown Eyed Girl, okay? <laughs> Like songs that I've written. Like, what do we have about a dozen songs that I've written that we play in some? I don't know the words to those things. Yeah. I, I have to have one of those things up. So, so do you get messages from all over the country oh, because yeah. of that? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I just did a, I felt like Casey Kasem the other day yeah. because I did a long distance dedication. Uh, and it was somebody, uh, they had gone to the zoo and um, one of the, I can't remember if it was the woman or man who had said, I love you mm -hmm. at the zoo, right? So the next day, he wanted to reach out on the radio and say, I love you back. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a tearjerker. Yeah. That, yeah. And that, it was really See, sweet. the ratings just went up just it did, yeah, because, By the way, did you hear us get sucked in and sitting in the parking <laughs> lot? That's now right. He we was doing, in the parking lot. Wait and I'll tell it. you what he said. <laughs> Star 94 one. And that's yeah. it. And you're stuck. Yeah. Um, right. That reminds me, for all, of, all three of you, that there's three components to FM radio that there's not an AM radio. And the three components are, well, we have a job in radio. That's number one, you got a boss telling you what to say, how to say it, what not to go too fast or slow. Then you got your endorsement business that's on your own, basically, where you have the clients when you hear Frank Motors. But then the third thing is, is that when I first got in radio, they made me, you're on the boards, they didn't have the budget for, for me to run a board. Mm -hmm. And that's just how talk radio was kind of done. You guys have all that magic you do in between. So when you think they're listening to music, on when you're and when you're sitting on the beach, they're not listening to music. 
Is well, there going to be a Vita drum solo? That's not necessarily true, Sully. I mean, we still do live shows. But, well, I know, but aren't, but, but aren't you guys doing like, callers and stuff like that? I always see oh, you guys yeah. working on... Absolutely. Like I in a song of, sweep, yeah. yeah. You're, you're doing prep. Yeah. You're making sure, hey, you know, the next subject yeah. and what story, right? Absolutely. All that stuff. No, I'm not exactly. suggesting you do live shows. I mean, during your live shows, mm -hmm. I'm, what I'm saying is you're nonstop. You may, oh, be yeah. only, you may be only talking for 12 or 14 oh, minutes. And now, I'm sorry, we have to post on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and everything. So it, it, it is not a, yeah. it's not a, oh, that's a cool job. They get to say a couple words and listen to the music. It ain't like that at all. It's a busy job. Because I went to FM, for, as I said, for about three minutes. I couldn't survive. Well, you're also timing it out. You're making sure that the top of the hour hits at the mm -hmm. top of the hour. I will tell you, the one thing that just absolutely floored me was when I did guest host on your show. And I did, I think, one or two others later on at someone else's show. I don't remember who it was, but... The fact that the board op is through the window, pressing all the buttons like you're talking about earlier. Yeah, that's nice. It is nice. <laughs> I was like, man, this is awesome. I can just... But, again, talking that much and filling that much content, you weigh the two out, I'll take the Well, board. Roger had such a gift. Roger had such a gift that I honestly had learned, because I, you were on the radio, I think, 10 years before I'd even been the radio. And, and he had such a gift of telling you why you why you should care because mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down like yeah. it's almost like here's what's happening here's why you should be mad <laughs> right I and mean, it was a great formula and to do that he would tell you the story he had two ways to do it you told the story and then pe then peeled it back or you peeled it back as you were going along both ways worked but that was a great thing that i learned from you along the way is you talk about peeling the onion this guy's the master you should have an onion farm instead of an apple <laughs> You can't peel the apples. Although I peel, I peel, you know, I put them in the put them in the apple pie. So apple season coming up. All right, September. September after Labor Day. I'm I, I still say it's gonna come in. Right there, he got it. Listen, right in there. I, I still think like, <laughs> we do a live show from the apple farm. Why don't you do it? Get a stage out there and a live audience. And I, like, why well, couldn't we do that? Can we? Can we, can we say we where the apple farm is though, so yes. people can come see? It? It's in Julian, California, off of Winola oh. Road, oh. next to the Mangini Way. We will bring out. I believe should be the next San Diego mayor. He's a business owner right here in San Diego. After the break, we'll bring him out and maybe Roger can uh, can talk him into running for mayor. I think Roger could. This guy's a fantastic guest. Coming up on the air, he's on the air. So excited. Clint August, Roger Hedgecock, Delina Bennett, me and Tommy, and of course, the Sully Band. Come visit us at Hess Fest next Saturday. Out of the IB Pier. Roger, I, Roger's a familiar face in the crowd, as has been Delena, and I believe Clint has seen the I've become one of your groupies. I'm out there all the time. <laughs> it's because of these guys here. Yes, I love concert. you guys a lot. Can they I say, great. can I tell you the one concert I'm looking forward to this year? Um, not that we're playing, just the one I'm going to. Which one? And I want to, I don't know if there's any seats left, but I'm going to put it out anyway. Belly Up Tavern on September 22nd. Mm -hmm. Christopher Cross. Oh, Are you kidding sailing. Me? Are you kidding? Christopher yeah. Cross. Yeah. Now, Yacht look at he was big in the 80s and now he's big. He's 80. <laughs> but he's 80. still. <laughs> but still. <laughs> but Christopher Cross, that guy. No, I mean, you're going to go to the show. Like, it's, it's going to a Billy Joel concert. You don't realize I know every one of these songs. How do I know any of his songs? And I know all of them. Same thing with Christopher Cross. I'm looking for We it. had Christopher Cross on the radio once and he said, Tommy, I just made it in and made it successful at the perfect time because he said all the artists and rock and roll stars that came in after me didn't get any money. He goes, I got money. He goes, Oh yeah, because the they, they yeah. it was a new deal. Oh yeah. What, was Cross. he the beginning of Yacht Rock or was it Little River Band? Mm, I want to go with Christopher. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, Ride Little like River the wind. Band. No, I don't think so. <laughs> don't you love that Yacht Rock is a thing though? Of course. Because you, because you turn it on and I can, I've heard people go, what's Yacht Rock? You turn it on, oh, that's Yacht Rock. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. listen baby, comes on and Michael, McDon <laughs> and Michael McDonald is, now you're on the Michael right. McDonald channel, which right. is the Yacht Rock. I know who, that's who that was before you said Michael McDonald. Exactly. That's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I just need the yacht though. I need the yacht to go with the rock. That's what I want. You just need the hat, Clint. Give me the hat, give me the shoes. First of all, you need an agent. Yeah, you're not being exactly paid right. Never had one. Just by talking to you, I know. <laughs> All right, we got we All got right. one former mayor here. Who's our next mayor? All right, <laughs> this man should run for San Diego mayor. I see him on KUSI all the time, and I love this dude. The owner of the Dot Cocktail Lounge, Alonzo King. How we doing? What's up, brother? Good to see you. I like that. You look sharp. Thank Alonzo. you. Alonzo, can you name the song? Yeah. Trouble man, Trouble Marvin man. Gaye, right. the best. <laughs> Good to see you. Love you, man. Love, Love you, too. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Good. Alonzo, well, so I can't Good. believe that you picked Trouble Man. That would be, like, top three. Well, you know, or, you know if you're, if Marvin you're... Gaye was one of the Come on. best at singing that 
I don't know. But trouble. His voice? Yeah, but trouble, man. Trouble, man. And Let me tell was, you something. That was a go-to when you had, you know, a guest over for dinner when you were single. Well. <laughs> that was, you know, let's... let's <laughs> Solange was like, well, <laughs> why do you think I love when it? I was let's single. turn on the turntable. <laughs> turn, turn out the light. When I was single, light it was one candle. of my go-to songs. That's it. That's, that's right. It. Let me tell you something. This man cares. You know, I know you talked about Roger caring when you were on the radio and talking about peeling the onion. This dude, every time I see you on KUSI about a certain topic, you know, whether it be about businesses and having to make outdoor patios to having to wear masks to whatever, you did it, but you were really upset. And yeah, well, I didn't have a choice. It was forced on me. Well, but hold on a second. Before we start, let's, I want to talk about the dot. Okay. Because you have reinvigorated a part of, the, of this city. That, that needed it, frankly. Yes. Right? We're trying to do more. We are uh, expanding, getting ready to open a little small cigar lounge on the opposite side adjacent to the bar. Okay. It should be open by my birthday, September the 5th. Come All right, write that down. Let's write that down. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. But uh, there are a lot of things going on in the community that we're trying to be a part of, trying to make the area more viable for not only the military, but for San Diegans. So for those folks that don't know you or where your, where your establishment is, tell us exactly where it is and, and, and what we can look forward to. It is the DOT Cocktail Lounge. It is located at 3600 Main Street across from Navy Housing, the high rises on Main, uh, in between the 5 and the 15. Mm -hmm. It is the only purple building on the street. You cannot miss it. 100% full of smiles, and it's all about having a great cocktail around great people. And we send you home in an Uber if you need it because we want everyone to get home safe with their family so you can come back and have drinks with our yeah. friends. One of, the, one of the first things that, that brought you some notoriety here in San Diego was the fact that, look, at small business is the biggest taxpayer in this county the biggest employer in this tax in this county and the least incentivized in this county. Right, 100%. And, and suddenly, um, there was a question of constitutionality with what they did with restaurants and bars during COVID. Part of it was about public safety, but part of it was just ridiculous, as in open you up for a day, you, you buy all the inventory for a day, and then close you down the next day, and this, you never saw some businesses ever again. Faith. Talk about that, because that was the tipping point for you. The tipping point, um, I felt as though it was 100% political agenda-based had nothing to do with public safety after a while. Mm -hmm. uh, we dealt with the public safety issues and everyone got to the point where they understood the severity of the situation. But once you got past that and you saw that there was room for you to move forward and move into a new era, which was being outside, spaced away from each other, mm -hmm. in canopies, out on the sidewalks, in parking lots, whatever the business could have available for themselves to do. Once we got to that point, then they start touring with us. Well, you know, go buy all this equipment, set up outside. Well, no, you can't set up tomorrow. Tomorrow is, is a bad day. And then you come back after you spent all of this money, <clears throat> you put all these resources together and trying to get employees together. Well, we'll leave you over for a week. Now we have to shut down again. Yeah. So there's no way you can run a business that way. I mean, the government couldn't function that way. The government's not functioning anyway, but they couldn't function that way if they had to work a day off a day who do no you blame? Guidance, no guidelines. Who do you blame? Do you, well, I, I kind of blame, uh, in California, I blame the governor. And it, it falls all the way down in San Diego to our mayor because he came into office after watching this unfold during his uh, trying okay. to become mayor. Right. He watched the whole thing unfold, and then when he got in office, he doubled down on the mass. Yeah, it was so stupid. But I, I just don't But understand. you survived. Look at you. I survived, but... I had KUSI, I had other things going on that a lot of people didn't have going on. Yeah, but Falange, you wouldn't have had KUSI were it not for what you were doing. I mean, look, I mean, there's there's plenty of people trying to get on TV and radio. Right. And, and what you were doing was creating jobs. Yes. You were making lemonade out of lemons. I mean, it, it, was, it was pretty remarkable that any of these businesses, in my opinion, uh, made it through here because, you know, then the, then the PPP program goes, the, the <laughs> PPP program comes out and ran out of money the day you applied. Sure. <laughs> So the only yeah. people that got money on the, on the PPP was the second round of PPP because the multi-billion dollar companies all applied for it. They, their payrolls were millions yeah. of dollars. And most of them didn't have to apply. Their banks just filled applications yeah. out for them. Sure. Well, Walmart was open. My church was closed. You were closed. <laughs> yes. What, what sense does any of that make? None. <laughs> Strip clubs were open. Well, the good news is he's back and better, and you should hear what he has going on at the dot because I got an inside scoop. All right. And uh, you'll be sitting in the driveway.
this segment brought to you by The Dots. Where is it at again, Falonza? 3600 Main Street, San Diego, 92113. It's always important to have the zip code when you're going to the bar. Yes. <laughs> And I just realized it looked like somebody from Ombak with this oversized t-shirt on. <laughs> if I do this, wardrobe did this. If I do this. I like it. I kind of like the pants. Are those pajama pants? Look like I I, so I, I look like an Ombak guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been this town a long time. So, welcome back. I love your t-shirts. Thank you. By the way, uh, you could land a G If you had like three of these sewed together, you could land an F-18 into this and it wouldn't go through. This what? is the thickest t-shirt I've ever had on my entire life. It's I like painter's I, pants I didn't want you to feel like you would be in a oh, t-shirt. I, might... I feel protected. You have this t-shirt, I feel like Falonzo's hugging you. Thanks at the bar. <laughs> That's a great bar hug. Isn't that great? <laughs> hey, right. Delena. While I fix my mic, you continue that. Delena. Yes. One week from today, I believe you have a big promotion oh, with Star 941. Yeah. Our, you guys uh, got our going? Star 941 Pick a First Party, presented by SDCCU. <laughs> yeah. Um, Love those guys. So, yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, women go up on, well, and men, they actually, you know, some of their husbands want to go up and pick a purse or mm -hmm. whatever. But we do designer purses, everything. Fendi, Gucci, Louis, and we go up and uh, they get to pick and, a purse. And how many years has this been going oh, on? Oh, God. Um, 17? Yeah, I remember oh, when it yeah. started. Really? Yeah. Here's wow. how. Here's the story of Pick a Purse. So uh, Jeff and Jared and I were at Star 94.1, mm -hmm. and we were interviewing a potential program director. His name's Charlie Quinn. Yeah. Love Charlie. What up, Charlie? And we asked Charlie, go, hey, Charlie, tell us a great promotion. And he goes, I have an idea for a, a Pick a Purse party. <laughs> he goes, we could have women and men, uh, you know, pick purses, and they're designer pur purses. And then I said, you know what? That's great. Let's hopefully we hire you and let's do it. So he uses that interview to get more money at the other station he was at. And then we stole Pick a Purse. You stole the <laughs> idea from Charlie? Yeah. What? That he is knows. funny. Oh, yeah. I wonder if, yeah, yeah. Charlie, thank you because it, <laughs> it's a great promotion and we're still doing it oh, 17 yeah. years, years later. later. still successful. <laughs> yeah. And with you, the May Ride, right? May Ride just happened a couple of weeks ago. How, yeah, how did that go? A couple months, yeah, 20 years in the making, man. And it's uh, it's all for our troops and their families through the Armed Services YMCA. And, uh, we, you know, the vendors and the and the music and the, the heck, the Soli Bands played there twice. Yeah, you know? and, super uh, fun gig. Which was very, very nice of them. But, yeah, it's the kids zone and everything. And it's all about military families and helping them out with physical Amen. rehabilitation and, uh, you know, everything from rent to food to everything. Yeah. Amen. Wow. And it's August, and in a blink of an eye, it's apple season. Apple season's coming Ta up. Hey, for people that don't know, how are you the apple farmer? So I've got 8,000 apple trees in Julian, California, at the uh, Vulcan Valley Apple Farm. And uh, after Labor Day or so, 8,000? They're going to have uh, all these, I guess, seven varieties all come, come ripe. And people can come out, buy a bag, and pick fresh apples off the tree that I tell you are going to be ripe. And I show them where they are. And they get Do they get the Roger apples. Hedgecock experience? Oh, they get it. They Farmer get Roger? Thing. Oh, they get the whole thing. It's a full Monty. I mean, it's a full... <laughs> Why are you pulling up on a tractor? I have a tractor. I have a Kubota. It's a very good tractor. Bragger. Do you need the tractor? Yeah, right. <laughs> Here's a question. I, and not only that, I have six attachments for my tractor. Ooh. Ooh baby. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I used to live in a condo. I had a, I had a drive-up mower. I didn't need it, but it was cool. I had a mower. Oh, you need God, the tractor, Roger, you just have a tractor? I have No, I, I own one, and I have a, also a John Deere mower. No kidding. Oh, yeah, you got to have all the... I spend a day out there doing yard work that way. I want to do a commercial for you, man. Hayseed hat. <laughs> hey, welcome to Vulcan Valley Apple Car, man. Come on, hop on, tractor, pick some apples and be happy. Woo! With a NASCAR hat on. Oh, my. <laughs> hey, but people come out. People come out to see Oh, God, yeah. I sold 12,000 bags last, uh, yeah, last year in, in 12 days. When I, re when I remember you called me and said, Tommy, please stop mentioning us. I wanted to get you and everybody else at KUSI out to have yeah. a special day and stuff. By the time we got it arranged, there were no apples left. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll do it early this year. So yeah, here's my question. So I'm thinking in terms of business. You have 3,000 apple trees. No, 8,000. 8,000 apple trees. How many apples, when you say a tree, okay, how many average? Okay, let's get a calculator. No, calculator. I'm not a calculator. How many average per tree? I don't have an average in mind because some trees, they're Democrats, and so every other year they don't work. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, wow. He's you know? going to make that turn, man. Oh, he just, <laughs> my ratings just went up again. They just did. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because I, cause I, uh, I was thinking about planting some, uh, some vineyards at, on, on my property. Look, and I realized, you know, if you, if you plant Cabernet grapes, you get about three bottles of wine per, per, Cabernet, per, per vine. That's a Monday, right, Delana? Sure. So there you Monday go. Monday night or Tuesday yeah, Monday night. Monday night or Tuesday night. Got that <laughs> coming. So I figured, well, if you could do, if you could plant 300 plants... Um, that would be 90 bottles of wine. That's roughly 75 cases. 
That's enough to give your friends and family and keep you in line, if it was any good. Otherwise, you got salad dressing, vinegar, right? Mm -hmm. there you and, go. and moreover, it's enough to get you the IRS treatment as a farm, which is a seven-year depreciation of your cost. No kidding. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Roxy. I'm not a tax and guy, but what about, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> we have a new show coming out on Saturday. It's what about Roger? <laughs> 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 So now you're planning just for yeah, exactly. tax purposes, which is a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Delaney had a question. Oh, I did, it just had to do with that. You don't have to pay as much taxes as property tax, right? Because it is a farm. It's a farm. Yeah. Oh, the most protected people in the world in, in, Cal in the United States uh, on the IRS code are farmers. Yeah, yeah. That's because they have to go through so much. You, you want to be humble, you become a farmer. Because you, <laughs> you have the least controlled variables of any sure. business right. around, you know. By the way, I just want to compliment Clint because he's taken up the cudgel for our home front San Diego thing we used to do. Uh, the same thing of, of, of helping families when we first did, you know, back in the 90s, all the wars were going well. on. And all these guys are deployed and these families are sitting there and the, and the washing machine goes out or the transmission yeah, goes right. out and all this stuff happens. And we were right there. We had, we sure. had money. We had people to plumbers. We sent over plumbers. Right. Uh, I mean, it was just fabulous to do it. And you've picked up the cudgel. It's so great. To see. Mm, you started, man. Thank awesome. you. Hey, so, Falonzo, you're, you're at the tip of the spear for the community, right? I mean, we hear from fans and listeners and all that stuff, but we're not across the cash register. We're not seeing community people actually living their lives every day. You're hearing stories every single day. Every day. Tell me the difference between 2019 and today. Because obviously we took a dip. Are we had, or do we feel like we're, you know, this is an inflation thing killing all of the good vibe we had when, when COVID was quote unquote, at least COVID point one was over? We are coasting into how you approach your situation mentally okay for each individual i approach every situation like my glass is running over yeah most people have that half full or half empty quarter or, or right, whatever yeah. i'm flowing overboard so for me i'm seeing nothing but positivity coming in my field now what about what about the people that that frequent your your place uh, either regulars the or military so my bar is a retired military. It has been a retired military, active duty military hangout for, since the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, and those people are in the best of spirits and having uh, the time of their life. Well, because interest rates are up and those savings accounts are making a ton of money what? right now. <laughs> Which bank are you at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody's going money backwards. But uh, there are no people that feel as though they're in worse shape today than they were two years ago. Interesting. Good. That's, no, that's good news. Yeah. Because look, I mean, there's a reason there's a consumer confidence in, index. Because perception's reality, and this whole entire thing sometimes works on something called the Elliott Wave Principle. Right. We start feeling good, we all start feeling good. We start feeling bad, we go down to capitulation, we wonder why we're good. <laughs> because Clayton Bennett, Clint August, Roger Hescock, little Tommy Sablon, Hall of Famer, I'm Sully, and that's the Sully Band. We got more to come. Beautiful. Watch this. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. this power. Power. That's, <laughs> that's, I always tell Tommy, you know, you only get perspective, you only get perspective when you sign the front of a paycheck. That's signing the front of a paycheck. Bam! That's just it. like that. There you go. 100%. Um, Delana. We need to get Mary Ayala in here. Oh she my has God. a lot of radio history. MPLM. When I, when I first started. Yes. MPLM. Yeah. Me and producer Lady Mary. Yeah. She was my producer, producer for um, ever. She also produces me at home. She's my wife. So, yes, I do need to get her in here. Yeah. The best, she, I think she'd be a great interview. My best text. I, Mary and I have been together my entire radio career. Like every single day during, even when I was doing the afternoon business stuff, when I filled in for you when you got sick. When I was doing evening mm -hmm. talk radio, that's how they kind of never put you in there. Again, yeah, he never got sick for more time. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff Albert, <laughs> if you're sure ever sick again, I'm, part of it. I'm not sure which way that was supposed to go. But my favorite, my favorite text messages were when I was doing. I think I was doing like a nine to ten deal or an eight to nine thing or something like that. Yeah. And I get text from Mary and Delena saying, "Hey, why didn't you ask him this?" I would get, I'd be getting like program director notes as it was happening. Last no, I love Mary. And she's, yes. she's, she's been, yep. like, connected at the hip. Yeah, she's we one to, of the best producers in the country, in, in my opinion. Definitely. I got her on the radio one time. Did you? One time. And it may have been the only time she was on the radio. I, I, I called her up. for me. 
Yeah, I mean, oh. she and she should have been on the radio because she's got the best she's personality sharp. ever. She's sharp. Love Mary. I, I I agree. I think she's the second best. The next time ever. you come on, you should vote. <laughs> you should Sorry, bring. Tommy. That's right. Mm. Yeah, and he's second best. She's the second best producer ever. She's a talk producer. Not that he's sensitive. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Hey, you know what? I love this show. I love everybody here. Question for Roger. I know we can talk about Apple season, which is in a blink of an eye. Uh, I know we can talk about politics, which we did. Um, I want to talk rock and roll with you. I don't know if you guys know this, but this guy was Mr. Rock and Roll in the late 60s here in San Diego. Mm. Oh, and Santa Barbara. I saw, when I was up there in Santa Barbara, I, had, I expanded the whole thing. So one, one time, I got Ray Charles to come up, and he, okay. and he I was wow. in a plane from Santa Monica Airport up to Santa Barbara Airport, and I met him at the airport, and, you know, Mr. Charles, thank you very much for being here, blah, blah, blah. We got all the people. We get in my van. We go up to, and I said, uh, I saw you flew up? And he goes, oh, yeah, I fly my plane all the time. Yeah. And I went, okay. I didn't have any further <coughs> questions to ask him because obviously he, was, he can't see. Anyway, he gets up on the stage, and he's got this unbelievable grand piano. Mm -hmm. And on the other side is Billy Preston. Oh. Wow. With a Hammond B3. Yes. Oh, yeah. Leslie Come Speakers. On. Yes. And the two of them, all they did all night was look at each other, and, and they had the wow. horn section, they had the raylets, all this stuff was going on. Right. But the the con they never looked at anything. They just looked at each other, and no. the whole thing was them just doing no. this. It was unreal. Billy Preston. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And in that uh, that was a night. In that formation with that band on the Ray Letts was a woman named Clyde King. I've been a fan of hers forever. She just passed away, but she was married yeah, to Bob I Dylan. I was going to say she just passed away. Wasn't yeah, she? Yeah. Wouldn't they feature her in Twenty Five Feet from <clears throat> or Twenty Feet from Stardom? That movie. I think she was one. Yeah, of them. Yeah, she is one of them. But she she's the best. She was with. She's on all the Linda Ronstadt hits. Yeah. Clyde King. You guys need to Google her. She's the mm. best. Yeah. Her and oh. Brenda Lee Eager and, uh, and You're Valerie right. That Pinkston. documentary is one of the best. Yeah. 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 It's 20 Feet yeah. from yeah. Stardom. It's about yeah. all of yeah. the background singers. Yeah. 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 The, the other great documentary about music is the one about the Wrecking Crew, which, which basically played on all the tracks. So you of, have, every, you, of everything. Of everything. Including the Archies all the way up to <laughs> the Archies. You know, Herman, and the, Herman and the Hermits. Um, do you, have any one of you ever, you know, during your, because, you know, look at you're, you're, you're in the entertainment, the hospitality business. You guys are in the entertainment business. I know he, his, his fantasy is a rock and roll fantasy. Have you guys ever got on stage or sang or anything like that? Do you have any desire to do that? No, did you see me just now? No. no, no. Just I felt like there was a longing. I felt like there was a longing for you to be behind a piano. Oh, no, I got over it after I saw that. All right. <laughs> hey, well, you can do that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Clint, because you're going to be with Sammy Hagar. Yep. Oh, I yeah. That's my point about that. for this. It's going to be the 18th, be, going to be broadcasting at the Beach House in Mission Beach near the roller coaster mm -hmm. from uh, 3 to 7. He's going to be there, I think, for an hour, hour and a half, presenting a check to the Surfrider Foundation, I believe. And uh, I have a, a life goal, a bucket list with him, because years ago at the Del Mar Racetrack, I was broadcasting live. He was the concert that night. And Bob Buckman, who's we all know yeah. in the business, I call him the Radio Mafia because he right. knows everybody, brings me backstage to meet Sammy. And because I was doing a live broadcast, but he, Sammy couldn't make it through the crowd to get to me, so I went to him with what's called that a happens. DAT recorder, right? Yeah. He was so cool. It's like a five-minute interview, but now, just as soon as he... Such a nice guy. Me and my buddy Rudy are there. He goes, yo, let me get my bottle of tequila. Let's do a shot together. I'm thinking, I'm going to do a shot with Sammy Hagar. Yes. <laughs> and my phone right. rings. My phone rings. And Kevin, one of the best engineers on the planet, remote engineers, Kevin Boyle. Clint, you got five minutes to get back here to put that thing on the air. And it's your last break, so you don't have another opportunity because the next jock is up after you. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so Sammy's coming out with Stood him. him up. I had to. Oh, and I no. said, Sammy, I love you. I got to get this on the air. And I've told him that story, but I've not been able to complete the bucket list. So I'm hoping Here we go. at the you 18th will. of there August. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or his beach bar cocktails. That's next whatever. Saturday, right? You're in competition. Yeah. With, oh, wait. What time does it start? That'll be a Thursday. Yeah. Oh, a Thursday? Yeah, and that's uh, during a normal broadcast. So oh, Thursday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. but I'm telling you, I, you got to come down. I mean, it's... From what I understand, yeah, it's all open. There's copious amounts of tequila there. I promise you, it'll happen. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Exactly. Whatever he wants, I'll say, dude, let's drink that. I don't care. Delana, who's the biggest star you've ever met? Ooh, Rock that's star, tough. Star. Um, Jennifer Lopez. I mean, wow. I mean, just coming, coming. That's a big one. Uh, one time, Bill Clinton just called us out of the blue to, uh, to stump for Obama. Yeah. Um, oh. God, um, biggest star. Uh, uh, you met them all in person, like in, like they come in. Are, they, are, are most of them as nice as they seem, or are some of them not very nice? Somebody, somebody that came in when we were doing Jeff and Jer, uh, Channing Tatum, yeah, um, Chris Jonas, Evans, Jonas Brothers, yeah, Jonas Brothers, <laughs> Justin Bieber. Wow, that's yeah. a huge one. Adam Lambert. Yeah. Adam Lambert, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga. This is kind of a by the way for you now. Yeah. Hey, well, she had a Lady Gaga. <laughs> right. okay. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get, this, I gotta get this on the air. I can't do a shot with you. Be your standby. Well, you just stand by. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, before let's just get, get out of here, Falonzo King, The Dot, by the way, let me just hold, if you're dying of thirst, 3600 Main Street, please. Um, I'm these dying of thirst right now. These t-shirts are $500 <laughs> a piece because they double as car covers. There you go. Oh, dude, this is like, I, like I'm getting like a workout. Hold this thing oh. up here like Hey, this. I've been saying the dot cocktail lounge. Is it the DOT or is it the, the DOT? Either way, it's, it's, it's great either way. I mean, uh... What does it stand for, DOT? Say? Dying oh, of thirst. thirst. Yes. You know, if I just read the thing... I'm no, it's okay. Thing. It's okay. <laughs> After a few drinks, you don't read it. That's why I you write it on the back of the shirt. Right. But I was going to say earlier, we were talking about the military and the way you guys support the families and all of that. Our military goes out, put their lives on the line for us. Yes. They'll come home and some will lose their families, lose everything they ever had in their life. Right. But in the state of California, we will take a pedophile and give them room and board and provide for them before we will provide for those that give us an opportunity to have the freedoms that we have in life. Amen. And help me understand that, because that makes no sense. Let's, no let's, let's make you think about that for the rest of the yeah. week. Come on. Alonzo King. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Very Alonzo. Awesome. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, Delana. Love you, Glenn. Love you, Mr. Hedgecock. <laughs> All right. Don't miss us next Saturday. Right. Stand by.